do you want to go home? Why can't we do this? Why do women think? James. Night, darling. Night, Mum. Night, boys. Is Emily home? Yes. Left all the lights on as usual. And the garage door open. I mean, how many times do I have to... Don't start, John. She'll have forgotten her front door key. What are you doing? I'm just going to put this in the machine. It's covered in something or other. Why don't you just leave it? I'm going to get an early night. She might want it for the morning. Besides, I've got a load that needs doing. Be ready for me to iron first thing in the morning. Fine. Come on, boys, turn that off. Yes, Dad. James, into your own room now, please. Deirdre, do you have to do that now? Wake Emily. There's mud on the stairs. The boys must have traced it. If I leave it, it'll be more difficult to get out in the morning. do a bit more studying. Thank you. I didn't hear you come in. Have you had a cup? Yeah. Night then. Mm. Night. 
Oh, uh, did you have that cottage pie I left out for you? Yeah, he's nice. You staying up for a bit? Yeah. There's a film on I might watch. Clark Gable. They don't make them like him anymore. Oh, he was a real man. They made stars in those days. There was no one to touch him. Do you know, they wanted him to pin back his ears. <laughs> but he wouldn't have it. Really? Well, I'm up early in the morning, so I'll see you then. Mm. Gary Cooper. There's another one. And Spencer Tracy. Ah. <sighs> Boys gone, haven't they? Not yet. Any minute. I think they're both in the garage. James's bicycle tyres are flat. Do you want some toast? Emily's still in bed. I didn't wake her. I think she might go around to Mother's later. She's got her one of those digital camera things as a reward for her exam results. I don't think either of the boys have her brains. I suppose we should buy something, shouldn't we? Straight A's. Any more coffee? I'll make a fresh pot. I'm sure Emily will want one. I'll take a cup up to her. I think we should get her an iPod. I know she wants one. Might encourage her to get rid of some of those CDs cluttering up her room. Emily's not in her room and her bed doesn't look like it's been slept in. I would have heard her if she left early. But you said she was home. Last night, when we came in, you said she was home. Because all the lights were on. No, maybe she came home, saw that we weren't here. I'll, I'll call Mother, maybe she went there. Mother and two of the girls that Emily was with last night, they said she left the club before they did and that, that girl with the car gave her a lift home. Well, maybe she stayed with her. Or is she your mother's? I said I just called there. I can't think of that other girl's name, can you? No. Was there anyone else with them when they left the club? Deirdre? I don't know. I'll call Samantha again, but... Why hasn't Emily contacted us? Hello, it's John here, Emily's father. Is Sweet Samantha there? I think my wife just spoke to her. Thank you. Name's Emily Harrogate, 18 years old. Family found her this morning. Oh, yeah, they moved her. Locals got her first, called in forensics. We've got family liaison on the way. I've got a number of houses, have security cameras to make sure we can access their tapes. Was she alive? I don't know. There's her father, 
mother and two brothers. They're in the house. I need you to cover up a very messy crime scene. They moved her into the music room from the cellar. The family will need to be relocated as soon as possible so I can get on with it. Was she sexually assaulted? I didn't tell you that until I've done the swabs. I haven't found a weapon, but profuse bleeding from a head wound. I came as soon as Deirdre, uh, Mrs. Harrogate, called. She seemed certain Emily was still alive. They had already called for an ambulance, but when I saw her, I contacted the police. She was dead, and, well, you'd be able to tell more than me, but rigor mortis had started, so she'd been dead for quite a few hours. You, uh, you examined her in there? Uh, yes, they uh, carried her up from the cellar. Family doctor. Uh, did you place these sheets on the sofa or did the family? Uh, she was she was here when I arrived. Oh, this is a terrible thing, terrible. Yes. Um, as you're here, what can you tell me about the family? Well, I'm their doctor, just their family doctor. I don't know them very well. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't socialise with them. They're a perfectly normal, happy, happy family. Well, they, well, they were. I mean, this, this is just dreadful. I'm aware of the patient confidentiality, but if there was anything you thought I should know... I don't understand. I've just told you I'm their family GP. You're their doctor? Yes, it's just I haven't had a chance to uh, question the family yet, so if there was anything that you felt was relevant at all... Deirdre Harrogate cleaned and vacuumed the hall and stairs last night. She said they were muddy. She spray-polished the banisters. Why was she house-cleaning at that time of night? Well, apparently she's an obsessive-compulsive cleaner, according to the GP, though we didn't hear it from him. Yeah, well, if the family are involved, it'd be a very convenient disorder. Mm. They're in there. How do you want to work this? I'll get my presence felt. Interview them when we relocate. Okay, let's do it. I'm DCI Roshin Connor. I'm going to be leading the investigation team. Now, obviously, I'm deeply sorry for this tragedy. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to move out of your home. It's now a crime scene. Do you have any member of the family you can go to? Uh, my, my mother-in-law, um, Helen Masters, lives, lives nearby. <sighs> I'm sure she wouldn't. Deirdre. Obviously, we'll give you every assistance you need to relocate now. Now, I'll also need to speak to each one of you individually so that I can work out what happened last night and this morning. I'd, I'd, I'd be present when you speak to my sons. Of course. They're, they're, they're deeply distressed, as, as obviously we all are. <laughs> I'll, um... I'll, of course, of course do anything. Anything. <laughs> I thought she was in bed. I didn't check her. I thought she was sleeping. <laughs> Detective Chief Superintendent Walker's office. Yes, Mrs. Walker, I did pass on the message. He's in a meeting, but I will tell him that you called again. I'm very sorry, but I will see that he gets it. Yeah. Yeah, I will. That's the third time she's called this morning. She says it's urgent. Money usually is with her, but I'm not having a squeeze on another penny out of me, right? OK, when's my next meeting? You're late. Car's waiting. And you need to get over to Wallington afterwards. It's the parole board, so you need Baron Mills files and the two... Yeah, Lynn. 
Look, I can't talk, though. No, I'm just going into a meeting. Yeah, I've just come from one. I'm going into another. Yes, I got your message. I was going to call you this evening. And what is so bloody urgent? When did this happen? Yeah? Okay, okay, calm down. Look, I'll try and finish earlier this afternoon. Look, then put him in a taxi, get him over to my place. If I'm not there, he's got a key. Just tell him to let himself in. Barry Mills files, plus the two letters. Cars outside to the left. I need to be back by 3.15 yeah, for the yeah, commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my tape recorder, Satch. You got yours? Well, no. Given the circumstances, I thought it'd be better to take notes, yeah? Mrs. Masters, thank you for agreeing to be with Mark. So I just sit and listen, is that correct? Yes, thank you. Okay. You're right, Mark. I'm okay, thanks. Can you tell me what time you left the house last night? We all left at the same time. We always have dinner here at Granny's on a Thursday. And did Emily always come? Yes. But she got her exam results. They were all A's. So she went out with some friends to celebrate. We went at about 6.15. Got back home at about 11.30. Then James and I went up to bed. Did you think your sister was at home? Yes. Her jacket was on the stairs. Mum picked it up. The lights were all on. We went up to bed. We watched TV for a bit. Then Dad said, Good night. And. And. My bike tires were flat, so we went to pump them up. My pump doesn't work, so I had to borrow Mark's. And we were in the garage when we heard screaming. And we went into the kitchen and then down into the cellar. And she was lying on the cellar floor. Mum was leaning over her shaking her and trying to see if she was breathing. Mum kept on telling Dad to help her, but he was... After a bit, he helped Mum carry her, and then he took her in his arms because Mum was hysterical. And what did you do? I don't know. Thank you, James. You can go now. There's no more questions. Do you want Dad in now? Uh, in a minute, I'll uh, I'll come and get you. Thank you for seeing me. We'll get a cloth. Clean up the chair. Such, the sooner we eliminate the family, the better, all right?
you have not made soap yet, then? Not through lack of applying. The Lord Chancellor has his own ideas. Milne. Barry Donald. Charged with rape. I recall it was the neighbor's daughter. And, with the murder of his grandmother, life sentence. 1999, February. Young Offenders Institution. Oh, of course. Sorry. You were his arresting officer. Yeah, he's recently been transferred to an adult prison. But his parole officers and the social services want to consider early release. After only six years. I am surprised. It's a very unpleasant case for me in particular. Men pleaded not guilty. I had uncovered some pretty damning evidence. And as his defense barrister, I'm required by law to defend him to the best of my ability. What did you do with this damaging evidence? I felt very uncomfortable when I discovered it. But it's an adversarial system. Ethically, I didn't have a problem. Morally, I did. You sure you don't want anything to eat? Best breakfast around. And the cheapest. Or you can have lunch. Bit of a foible of mine. When I was a kid, my mother used to cook these great big stews on a Monday. It would be on the go until it, it became this sort of congealed cement. Then she'd start all over again. I was a rare species who prayed for another potato famine. I have to eat everything separately. First the bite of sausage, then egg. Save for the taste. Left me with an abhorrence of all things mixed together like cottage pie. So you knew Milne's not guilty plea was a lie? Yes, of course I did. So what did you do? Nothing. When the jury came back in with their verdict, I had my fingers crossed. Yeah, that it would be guilty. Mm-hmm. This is what I discovered on her back, which wasn't charred by the fire. I obviously had it matched, and it was without doubt his shoe mark. You missed it. As it turned out, it wasn't required. But if he had walked free, I would certainly kill again. Still am. Just my opinion. Mine too. Thanks for your time. He was an abused child, detective. His father was very violent. His grandmother brought him up. It's all a game when it gets to trial, isn't it? You gave me a grilling in the witness box. But if that jury had returned a not guilty and he killed again, how would it make you feel? Hey. I was hired to defend Milne, Detective Chief Superintendent, to the best of my ability. That's my job. And screw the consequences. Just as well we'd enough evidence to lock him up, huh? I don't go along with this abuse syndrome crap. Mel was a real nasty, vicious little thug. His grandmother was 70 years old. He kicked her to death, then left her to burn in the fire. Yes, love? Can I get the fruit flan? You've got to have a custard and a separate plate, not together. She was always such a sweet girl. Never any trouble. It was unbelievable the way she and James got on. I'm sorry? Emily is my daughter from a previous marriage. James is my stepson. And your younger son? Is ours. We've been married for 14 years. My wife started the machine and then she Put Clean the stairs. Vacuum the hall. Yes, you know this, and I have explained to you my wife's condition. I'm a little unsure about the time, is Mr. Harrogate. You say that Emily had permission to stay out till 11, yet when you return, you presume she's asleep. My wife spoke to some of her friends this morning. They, they said they'd last seen her at, at 10. One of them... Drove her home. Yet she could have stayed out till 11. Mr. Harrogate, do you know if Emily had a boyfriend? Someone she might have arranged to have met at the house? She never mentioned anybody, and she'd... She'd been in most nights lately. My ex-husband, Emily's father, lives in South Africa. He's had no contact with her for years. And James's mother? She sends the odd Christmas or birthday card. James has no real interest in her. He calls me mum. 
Emily was an adorable and very loving girl. I can't think that anyone would want to hurt her. Especially anyone we know or have known. But there's no signs of forced entry, Mr. Harrogate. So Emily may have known her killer. Possibly even have let him or her in. Kill. Kill her. Surely to God this was just some awful accident. And she... She fell down the cellar stairs. She may also have fallen down the main staircase. A lot of it doesn't make sense, Mr. Harrogate. But we are going to treat Emily's death as a possible murder. John was effectively her real father. He adores her. We were a very happy family. I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. She puts too much emphasis on happy families. Well, she only found her daughter dead this morning. Mm. And if the death is suspicious, last night she managed to destroy any evidence we need to track the killer. But she knows who did it. He's protecting them. Oh, come on, it's not one of the family. No, it could have been an accident. Just back off them for a while. Do you think I enjoy doing this, Arch? Do you think I enjoy cross-questioning a woman who's just found her daughter battered to death? Until we find any evidence to the contrary, every member of this family is a suspect, including the 12-year-old boy. So don't tell me to back off. Turn that off. Turn it off! How could you be watching that disgusting thing and influencing Mark? I've told you about this before, now just get out of my sight! Here. Looks like a trainer, it's quite clear. I need to see if there are any marks that don't match the families. Found a weapon yet? Nope. Good thing is the floor's very clean, as is the rest of the house, so we're getting very clear prints. Who's doing the post mortem? Dunno. Oh, it looks like she died down here because of the large pool of blood. We've only had a cursory look at the girls' bedrooms. It's going to be a long day. Yeah, concentrate on the house to house inquiries. We'll see if they saw Emily coming home. It'll be before 11.30 last night. You know, anyone witnessed anything unusual? Oh, and um, see how we're doing with the security cameras. You know, we might get something from one of them. Yeah, OK. Oh, and pizza. Do you want anything? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I'll have a cheese and tomato uh, with a crispy room and, um, Cheese and garlic bread if I've got it. You'll be eating it in the car. No one brings food in the house. Bear in mind that Barry comes from a very dysfunctional family. Uh, yeah, I'm well aware of his background. He was taken in to live by his grandmother. Yeah, that's correct. His mother was in rehab and his father emigrated to Australia. Barry is working towards taking his A-levels and has been a diligent and conscientious student in class. He's keen to take one of the computer courses on offer. That, of course, could help him find employment on release. 
I think without his father's influence, Barry could very well settle with his mother. Yeah, she now has a council flat with suitable accommodation. Yeah, look, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I clearly hear what you're saying. Mr. Moan may have, as you stated, become a model prisoner. Or well, frankly, with well, the backup he appears to have been given, it's no wonder. Seems to me a shame that his rape victim was not given the same care and help. On the contrary, she's still unable to work. She's still very traumatised, as you know. And recently, she received these two letters, which she brought to me. As you will see, Barry is goading her with well, the fact that he will soon be on parole. We first charged him with rape and arson, then became aware that his grandmother could not leave her home without help. So if he did set the place alight, it's murder. Barry denied those charges. He only admitted under cross-questioning that he accidentally started the fire. According to his psychologist, Barry is adamant that he wasn't aware his grandmother was in the house. Barry's a liar. In my opinion, he's a dangerous sociopath. This evidence didn't come out at his trial. What am I looking for? Do we have copies of this? Uh, no, it's only just been brought to my attention. On the old lady's back, you will clearly see a shoe print that matches Barry's. She was obviously stamped on. Fire was started in the hallway close to the front door. Why was this never shown as evidence in his trial? I'm afraid the significance of this particular photograph was only noted by the defence. Remember me, do you, Barry? Look at me, son. I've just shown them a picture of your granny. The one with your footprint stamped all over her back. So I'm going to be watching every move you make. You try and contact your rape victim. Try getting a message to her. I'll see you serve 18. Understand me? You can take Mr. Milne back to his wing now. The parole board hearing is suspended. Thank you. They're all stinking liars! You're all against me, you sons of bitches! So fucking liars! That bastard framed me! I'll get you! I'll kill you! I'll burn you! I'll disfigure you! Oh! oh. Michael! Michael! Jesus Christ! Oh. You didn't cut yourself, did you? No. It was the shock. I just glanced down and look. I can't believe it. Read it. It's Emily, Emily Harrigan. Oh, she was such a lovely girl. She's been found dead. Oh, God. Michael, can you help clean up in here, please? Put the TV on. The news should be coming up. Michael? Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? You remember when I cleaned for them? They were such a nice family. You remember Emily, don't you? Yeah. We give us a shout when dinner's ready. Mm. Sorry. Got here as fast as I could. Brought some fish and chips. You hungry? Yeah. How come you're skiving off school? What's been going on? Nothing. Yeah, but well, you've been missing some classes. Haven't you got mock GC thingies coming up soon, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so what's been troubling you? Nothing. It feels like I'm having a one-sided conversation here. You want a cup of tea with that? No, I've got Coke. Yeah, look, it may seem like you're following the teacher's kid up, but it's a pretty dumb thing to do. I mean, you know you're good at pass your A-levels to have any chance of getting into a decent college. How many classes have you missed? Don't know. Don't know. Nothing. Don't know. Nothing. Hey, you're going to have to start talking to me, Richard. Come on. I want to know what's going on. What are you doing when you're not there? Walking around. 
walking around. What the hell has happened to you, Richard? <sighs> Your last resorts were great. Has something happened between now and then? Something happened to you? No. Oh, you just decided to chuck in going to school, is that it? What's it to you? What do you mean, what's it to me? I'm your father. I'm paying through the nose to keep you all. You think I like living in this dump? I'm here because I have to pay for the home you're living in too. Why don't we start again? Why don't you start talking to me? Telling me what's making you skive off school for starters, huh? Anyone bullying you? Christ's sakes, Richard, please don't sit there and look like that. I'm trying to sort this out. I am trying to sort you out. I am really worried about you. This is not like you. How would you know? I gave you a key, Richard. You know you can come and see me any time. It's not always easy for me to come over to you with your mother right out the way she gets. Try living with her. All I get is your sister's getting triple A's, your sister's top of the class, your sister's so talented. Come on, don't tell me you're jealous of your own sister. I never said that. I just don't want to be in constant competition with her. It's not my scene. If I don't want to go to school, I don't see why I should. I'm bored, it's boring, and I'm sick of it. OK. Let's be realistic. You don't want to continue school, what the hell do you want to do? I just want to be left alone. I'm sick of people telling me what I can and can't do. Because you're only 15 years old. That's why. And the eyes of the law, you're still a kid. Jesus Christ, son, you may think you know everything there is to know, but you've got a hell of a long way to go before you can just do what you like. You've, you've never been in trouble before. You've always had good grades. You want me to go and talk to your teacher? No! Then how are you going to resolve the situation? Richard. Richard! Richard! No, leave me alone! I just want to be left alone. It wants getting to me! Yeah, no one of you trying to get me. No one wants to tell me what I can and can't do. I don't need you. Because Richard, just calm down. I don't need you. Richard, are you okay? I don't need you! You were never there when I did, you're too late now! Just leave me alone! There were no signs of a break-in, so it's possible that Emily knew her killer. Now, it's also possible that she disturbed somebody who was already in the house. We have alibis from the family confirming that they were all together at the grandmother's house for the entire evening. And they also returned home together, mistakenly believing that Emily was in bed. I mean, this is a wretched case. She was a beautiful, intelligent girl out celebrating her exam results. No one has anything but good things to say about the Harrogate family, but we are going to concentrate on the family. I want as much information on them as possible. Are you going to stay with me? Yes, of course. I can't believe it's happened. I keep thinking she'll come home. It was all a nightmare. What do we do now? Well, we have to stay strong for the boys. And then we have a funeral to arrange. Where did you go last night? I told you I had some papers to check at the office. But if you hadn't gone, we would have been home by ten. No, 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 do not do this, please. Papers at the office? Do you really think I'm that stupid? You've been lying to me for months. I've just made some tea. I think the less you say about the office, John, the better.
got those three girlfriends of Emily's coming to the station later, so as soon as we're through here, we'd better get back here. Yeah? I've told you before, we have dinner here every Thursday. By we, I mean my daughter, John, and the children. Last night was only different because Emily wasn't here. She had gone out with friends to celebrate the results of her exam. I'm sorry. It's obviously very difficult for me to talk about my granddaughter. I don't know who would do such a terrible thing. She was a very special girl. I can't think. And your family left at what time? Later than usual. I think I think they left after eleven, maybe twenty past. I can't remember. It was also tense because John had been gone so long and Deirdre was very upset and James went looking for him. <laughs> we, we actually finished dinner. They came back and went home. You didn't answer my question, James. So let's start again, shall we? You did not, as you stated to me yesterday, spend the entire evening here at your grandmother's. Instead, you left for a considerable amount of time. Now, where did you go? Uh, no, nowhere, really. Not good enough, James. Where did you go? If you walked around, just tell us. You know, we need to clarify the exact time you left and returned here. Your father left before you, didn't he? Uh, I, I don't really remember. Not the exact times. Where did your father go? I don't know. Did you go and look for him? I mean, it was the middle of dinner, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, mother was getting upset. About what? Dad not coming back. We started to eat. Where did you go, James? I was going to go to his office, but my bike had a flat tyre. I sometimes leave it here to go and ride it in the park. Did you all arrive here together? Yes, we drove. Oh, it's a very short distance from your house to here, isn't it? Yes. How did you walk? I don't know. Dodge to the car. Yeah. Um, a new witness just came forward. She's at the Harrogate. Go on, question her. Oh, and Satch, do me a favour. Walk it. See how long it takes. So you're telling me that you left here to look for your father, but you changed your mind, is that right? Yes. Because your bike had a flat tire? Yes. You are gone for some considerable time. Why didn't you come back here to the house? James? Or did you go home? No, I did not. I didn't go home. I didn't have a key. And you didn't go and look for your father? No. Sorry, I think you've been questioning my son for long enough. She wants to know where you went, Dad when you left here. Can I speak to you alone? Hmm? James, will you? No. Thank you. Actually, I did leave the house here. I had a meeting at my office. Yes. Mrs. Masters already told me. I'm sure she did. Meeting just took longer than I'd anticipated. And do you have a witness? Someone who can verify this? Why would I lie? I had some business to deal with and I went to my office. Can't possibly think I had anything... Mr. Harrogate, yesterday you stated to me that you spent the entire evening with your family. Now you're telling me you were absent for some time. I have a witness, somebody who works with me, who will, I'm sure, Verify that I was there for about an hour. Then I returned here to my family. And that witness is? 
Her name is Dora Hills. Your wife's online too. She said it was very urgent. Sorry. That's okay, Lisa. Len, I was going to call you. Richard came to see me last night. Yeah, I sent him home in a taxi. Oh, shit. Have you contacted the school? Don't panic. Have you contacted the Call school? Call on line one. I think it's your son. He's calling from home. I'll get back to you then. He's on the other line. Hello, Richard? Oh, uh, this is DCS Walker speaking. Who's that? Sergeant who? Forensics match the strands of hair found on the main staircase with Emily. They also found a clump of hair in the vacuum bag. It appears to have been ripped out. She might have been trying to get away from someone. How long did it take you to get from the Harrogate's house to here? Oh, walking ten minutes, running, cut out in half. On a bike, cut out in half again. A witness at the Harrogate said she saw someone on a bike. She went to walk her dog on the golf course, came back 20 minutes later, and the cyclist was passing the Harrogate's place again. So she saw him first at 9.30 and then sometime before 10. James Harrogate said that he left his bike here at the grandmother's because the tire was flat and he couldn't ride it. Now, in John Harrogate's statement, he said that the morning that they found Emily, the two boys were in the garage. James says he was fixing his bike. Now, if they all drove home together... When did James take his bike back? They got a suspect, Satch. Oi, take your feet down. Oh, my God! Wow. Take a seat. Someone will be with you in a minute. I had to give the woman your name. I'm sure they won't even want to talk to you. They, they just want to know where I was the, the night it happened. I don't care about that. When am I going to see you? Darling, please, it's very difficult. I, I can't just leave the boys. We're, we're at my mother-in-law's. Our house is still being checked over. I always take second place. Always. No, no, you know that's not true. But then why aren't you here with me? Because it's impossible for me to leave. I... I'll call you later. Mother's cooked lunch if you want something. I can't eat. Deirdre. How long was James away from here? Almost as long as you. Whatever time that was. He did go looking for you. He didn't come to the office. Why, you had to go to the office on a Thursday night. When we always, For God's sake, Deirdre, always this is serious. dinner I with mother. I started asking James where exactly he was. What are you saying? That he went home? Is that what they think? That he had something to do with this? No. No, 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 they can't think that. He went looking for you. He never would have had anything to do with Emily's murder. That's what they're saying now, that it was murder. But she came home early. Surprised a burglar or... Look, Deirdre, I'm just saying that they are asking James questions, and if he wasn't at the office and he wasn't here, where the hell was he? I heard him crying last night. He's very distressed. Will you just stop doing that for a second? We have to protect him. He's very vulnerable. It was perfectly understandable, but it didn't mean anything. That's why what, he's what, so what, what, angry. What are, you, what are you talking about? You know how jealous of Emily he was. He just found it so difficult to keep up with her. Sometimes it could get very nasty oh, between them. Did you daughter? You listen to me. You don't mention anything about their arguments. You don't put James through any more than he has to.
Trump. And it's got a sort of frill here at the knee, and then another lower down, and a third one that's got beads and sequins on the hem. I'm gonna be late for my bikini wax. Do you think Emily arranged to meet someone? And the reason I'm asking is I find this very odd. She's given a curfew later than usual, 11 o'clock, yet she returns home at 10. She said she wasn't enjoying herself that much and wanted to get home. The other two didn't want to leave, though. So you offered to drive her home? Yes. And you saw no one by the house? No, I stopped to let her out, waved goodbye. I drove off, but I didn't see anyone. Cyclist? You see anyone on a bike? No, and it's very dark on one road, but I had my headlights on. And you have to drive slowly because of all the bumps in the road. Did she get on with her family? Oh, yes, they had great fun. They played tennis together. We go to the same tennis club. I mean, we used to. Emily always beat him, though. Very strong serve. Beat who? James, her stepbrother. She'd been having fights with James. Fights? Not real ones. He was just jealous of her. And she was very athletic, and she got into the tennis finals. And then she was also really clever. But, I mean, she worked hard, though. Do you know if Emily kept a diary? No, she never mentioned it. And you're all certain that she never mentioned any particular boyfriend, someone she was seeing? No. And I would have known. At the club, was there anyone paying Emily more attention than anyone else? No. To be honest, it was only really starting to get going when Emily left, so it wasn't that full. And she insisted on leaving by 10? Yes. Yes, she did. Did you not find that odd? Yeah. We didn't want to go. That's why Julia took her home and we stayed. Did you argue about it? No. Don't ridic not being ridiculous. Why do you want to go home? It hasn't even started to get going. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? I'm not coming with you and neither is she. I suggested that, but Julia's got this new Mini. She loves driving it, and she said she'd take her and come back. Are you close to Emily? Yes. You don't seem very upset about her death. Did she arrange to meet somebody? Don't know. Do you know if she had a boyfriend? If she did, she never told me. We got a complaint in at midnight. Somebody said they'd seen a boy climbing over their garden fence. A patrol car drove by but couldn't see anyone. Then we get a call in this morning from a Jeff Donald who was fishing by the ponds to say that he'd seen a boy throwing stones at the ducks. He had some words with the boy and the boy moved on. But Donald returned later and found the swans. Swans? They took them to the RSPCA. One of them was already dead. The other one was operated on immediately to remove the fish hooks and the piano wire from its neck. The piano wire was wound round the neck of the swan, sir. When we confronted Richard and asked him if he knew anything about the injuries... You arrested him at the pond? Yes. He made no attempt to escape. He was sitting nearby. He, he looked dishevelled and disorientated, um, as though he'd slept there rough all night. I think he had. He's admitted injuring the swans? I'm afraid so, sir. We found a small amount of marijuana and some sleeping tablets in his pocket. The tablets were in a bottle prescribed to Richard's mother. He became very agitated when I said I would call her, and that's when he asked me to make a call to you. I don't understand. No. I just don't understand. But don't need Richard. to! But, but don't need to! No, I need to know. Harrogate, second paragraph. 
They say they've got a witness that saw someone near her house. So what's that got to do with me? Have you read it? I'm reading it, all right? What? Well, you've got a drop handlebar bike, haven't you? And that night you, she was, she was, she died. You, you were out late, weren't you? So were you out on the bike? No. I went to the pub, I got home early. Oh, no, you didn't. No, because I asked you if you had that cottage pie and you said you had and you were lying because it was in the bin in the morning. You never ate it. So, are you the one they want to question? No, I ate your cottage pie, all right? No, it's not me they want to question. I wasn't anywhere near there. Why are you in my face all the time? You're really pissing me off. If it was me riding past their friggin' house, I would have said so. Well, they'll be coming here, you know. What? They're making inquiries to anyone that worked for them. I did. I worked for them for 18 months. So they'll be coming to see me and they'll ask about you. Why? Oh, you knew it. That's why. And you've got a racing bike. So it's obvious. They've got a witness, Michael, that saw you. It wasn't me, Jesus Christ, woman! I was here with you. You know that. You were watching some, I don't know, crap film on the TV. I was up in my room. I didn't eat your dried out cottage pie because I came in with a pizza. All right? All right? They're not going to press charges. But I've agreed with them that I'll arrange for you to meet someone who might be able to help you. Now, they're going to refer your case to the youth offending team and they'll decide what happens next. Richard, are you listening? Richard! Yeah, I'm listening. They'll want to hear what the therapist has to say. And if you engage with the therapist and if it's successful, they won't press charges. That's just mere caution. Richard, are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm listening. Look, your mother's coming to take you home. She's going to take you away. She's going to take you home. Until I've arranged for the best therapist there is to sort you out, yeah? OK. child was a virgin, but I noticed she had what we used to call a stubble bruise to her upper lip. Could have been caused by someone trying to give her the kiss of life or she was having a heavy petting session. Right, now her neck was broken. We have pressure bruises to her throat. Turn over, please. Injuries to her right shoulder. Left arm has heavy bruises and more to her ribs, especially this area. Right, now we also have further welts on the back of her thighs. As if someone beat her? No, I doubt it. Possibly. Back, please. There's an area on the left side of her head where the hair has been torn out by the roots. It's left quite a substantial bald area, the size of a five-pence piece. Now, these two head wounds, one at the right side of the skull and one at the curved end of the skull, were done with a lot of force, causing a depressed fracture. I think the first blow to her head would have rendered her unconscious. The second blow killed her, snapping her neck. If there were blows. But you just I know said... what I said. It's possible there could be blows, or they could be the result of a fall. Now, we go back to the bruised arms and neck. If she was fighting with someone and they gripped her throat, she struggles free, falls backwards, and someone then grabs hold of her arm. To stop her from falling. Yes, but they couldn't hold on to her, so she fell backwards. And there we have the welts to the back of the legs and shoulder. She then hits her head twice, once here, and falls again to hit the back of her skull. Very, very deep indentation. And the force broke her neck. Well, they've got a big staircase, but it's not that steep, is it? No, but the cellar stairs are. They're off. 
Well, maybe they had a fight, you know. She fell backwards, gets concussed, then maybe she Maybe who had the fight? I don't know, I'm just thinking aloud. Unless nobody killed her and it was all an accident. Yes, and she bruised her own arms and her own throat and she pulled her own hair out. I mean, come on, Satch. Whether she fell or she was pushed, it could still be an accidental death. How are those bruises on her body? I've just won the 315 at Sandown, 30 to 1. Nice odds. What odds would you give, murder or accidental? Well, if the push came to the shove. One staircase, possible four, but two staircases, odds on she had help. An 18-year-old girl out celebrating, clubbing with her best mates, and she comes home an hour early. Why? If she was meeting somebody. I mean, maybe this, this cyclist the witness saw. I mean, could have been looking for someone who rode past her twice. Well, we have a description of the bike. It sounds as if it's a racing bike. And um, the shoes worn by the family on the night of the murder, they're with forensics and we have matches. But we are still waiting for more details on two prints also discovered in the cellar. Good. Thank you. that needs doing, Michael. No. Well, this is a light load for you. Where's your jeans, your T-shirt? You're out there, aren't you, where to work? Do you want to get them? I'm doing dark colours. They don't need washing. What about socks? I've got two pairs here. Have you got dirty socks upstairs? I've got a routine, Michael, and you know I hate them left stinking in the laundry basket. I said there's nothing that needs washing, Mum. And don't you go snooping around in my room, either. If there's anything that needs a wash, I'll do it. Oh, well, that's a first. As you like. Yes, as I like. It was a very minute pinhead-sized blood stain on the top carpet. When I peeled it back, I found further blood pooling. And we'd taken blood samples from between the floorboards. Well, as you can see, it must have originally been quite a substantial amount. Somebody did a very good job cleaning the top carpet. As to how it got there, I haven't a clue. Well, we'll do the DNA test to see if it was Emily Harrogate's blood. Ready. Adrian's theory, she fell backwards down the stairs. There was no weapon. Step with a sharp edge stair tread. The cellar steps are stone, which could have been the cause of the injury, but... What? I'm more sceptical. I would like to experiment before I agree to disagree with our noble friend, Dr Kinton. She's wearing similar clothes to our victim and is the same height and weight. I think you'll get a better view from the bottom of the stairs. So you're not going with the fall and possible accidental death? No, her injuries are horrific. Tell me how someone gets from the foot of one set of stairs from another with severe bruises to the throat and arms. Have my mind the markers? Charlie. I don't believe this. Not exactly CSI, is it? Uh, let her fall naturally first, Hugh. OK, let her go. Right, pick her up, Hugh. And this time use force. Hold on to her as if she's struggling. OK, grip her firmly and shove her. More like a little brick. Get off me! Get off me! Right, Hugh, pick her up, take her to the cellar. So she was pushed. 
Yeah, but who the hell was up there?